Let's talk about the differences between the 550B and the 550C. And as I do that, I'll explain to you why I decided to upgrade my 550B to a 550C. This is the 550B, and when we compare it to a C, we can see there's a little bit of design difference in the casting. And on the 550B, the spring retainer pin opening is recessed into this opening. But the biggest difference is on the 550B, the pivot pins are pressed in. And to remove them in order to do a major cleaning and lubrication, you have to remove the shell plate, the platform, the main shaft, and then punch out both pins. And when you put it back together again, you have to punch them back in. Now the amount of force I have to use to punch them out and punch them in is not minor. It's not light. On the 550C, the pivot pins are now threaded and they have a grease opening where you can use a standard grease needle and apply the grease with the simple use of a grease gun and, and a needle. On the 550B, to get grease on the inside, you have to take it apart, punch these pins out, apply the grease, and put it all back together again. Here, the pins stay in place, you insert the needle, apply the grease, and you're done. Also, if for some reason you do have to remove the pin, you simply unscrew it. You don't have to pound them out. Now let's take a look at the 550C. And this is the 550C frame. As you can tell, there is a design difference in how it's cast. And the spring retainer pin opening is on the surface instead of recessed. But the biggest difference is the threaded pivot pin. Again, it has a needle opening where you can grease it in place. And for some reason, you do need to remove the pivot pin. It unscrews. You just use a wrench and take it apart. All right, the tools we will need is a 3 30 second wrench, 1 8th, 5 30 second, 3 16 and 1 4th. We we'll also need the appropriate wrenches to remove the bolts that are holding your press to the ultra mount or the workbench. You'll need a 7 8 inch wrench to remove the handle, and you'll need a 3 quarter wrench to install the threaded link arm pins. You also need a spare tool head and the, and the pins. And installed in station one needs to be a Dillon powder die. This is what's going to hold the alignment tool. The alignment tool comes with the upgrade kit. The upgrade kit also comes with a tool head, but it does not come with powder die. So if you don't have a spare one, see if you can borrow one or you might have to buy one. You'll need a grease gun with a Zerk adapter. You also need a grease needle to be used with your grease gun. You'll need some kind of a mop or a swab to apply grease to the pin openings. I'm a, I actually use a 22 caliber mop. I, of course, no longer use this on guns, but it's, I find it very practical to use it to apply grease to those openings. You also need some additional grease. You'll need some oil. I believe Dylan recommends 30 weight motor oil. You'll need some blue thread locker. And you'll need a hammer. So these are the tools and some of the supplies we'll need. And in addition, you also need the upgrade kit from Dillon. If you buy the Dillon upgrade kit, you basically get all the parts you need. When I was comparing things, if you, at the time of the making this video, buying a 550 frame by itself is a hundred, was like $110. And the upgrade kit was $110. So for the kit, you got the frame and a few other things. Well, the reason you have to get a new frame is because the link arm pins are threaded, so the frame has to be threaded. So you get the frame, you actually get another tool head, and you get a 
primer arm spring already installed. You also get two threaded link arms. Now what I did was I just hand installed them just to make sure everything would fit because what I didn't want to do is take my 550B down and in the process of trying to install the 550C you find out I have some kind of a issue either with the frame or with the um, threaded link. All right, those went on just fine. Now, as I get things ready, I will be cleaning the threaded air in the openings. And these pins before I apply grease to them. You also get an alignment tool. This is used in conjunction with a tool head and a powder die, a Dillon powder die, without the powder measure, just the die. You use this so as you reinstall the main shaft and the platform, this helps you align the platform correctly. It also comes with primer track bearing plate. I don't think this is any different than the one I already have, but I'll double check it. So this may be surplus. And it comes with what looks like a nail that's had the tip cut off. This will be used to punch out the pivot pins on the 550B. And the kit also comes with an instruction manual. Now this manual is for the entire 550C machine. So, the manual doesn't tell you how to take apart your 550B. But that's what we'll be covering in this video. Now the reason you don't have other parts like the link arms or the couplers is because we, we are going to reuse the link arms and the coupler and the handle and the main shaft and the plate and the shell plate and so forth on this frame. The order in which we will be doing it is of course you'd want to remove any existing tool head. Then we're going to remove the primer assembly. Then we're going to remove the shell plate bolt, index bracket, and shell plate. Then we're going to remove the platform and we're going to remove the handle. Once the handle is removed, we're then going to remove the old frame from, in my case, the strong mount. If your frame is, is mounted straight to the bench, we're going to remove it from the bench. Now I did have a bullet tray. You don't have to remove the bullet tray. I, of course, I removed it just to make it easier to show what's going on. Now on the opposite side with the bin brackets and the cartridge chute, I am going to loosen those up. I don't have to totally remove it, but I am going to loosen them and so I can move them out of the way to remove one of the bolts that's holding the frame to the mount. And we're going to remove the spring of the primer arm. We're going to loosen the two bolts holding the primer system. If you have like an empty cartridge bin or a cardboard box or something, it'd be good to use that to store all these parts. I'm going to remove these brass pins. We're going to remove the set screw. 
for the shell plate bolt. Remove the bolt. Index bracket, shell plate. Now just so that I don't lose them, I do remove the detent ball and I do it just by using a piece of painter's tape to pick it up and then I pull out the spring. Now there's two bolts holding the platform into the main shaft, so we're going to remove those two bolts. And then the platform. Now the fail safe bracket isn't, it fits on, but it's not attached, so just be careful so you don't drop it. Next thing to remove is the handle. Let me reposition the camera so we can watch that. What I'm going to do now is loosen up the bend brackets and the cartridge chute so I can move them out of the way. Then I'll remove the four bolts holding the frame to the mount. Then we'll move it to a bench where we will continue the disassemble. Now I've already loosened up all the bolts before I actually even started the video just to make things a little bit quicker. Next thing we're going to do is to remove the set screw from the bottom of the main shaft. The set screw is what holds the cross pin in place. Once we remove this, it's a simple matter just pushing out the cross pin and then we can pull out the shaft. I believe at the factory these are installed with a little bit of thread locker. So at first there might be a little bit of resistance. Now at first glance, this might look just like the set screw that holds in the shell plate bolt, but it's not. And I'm going to show you a close-up comparing the shell plate bolt set screw and the cross pin main shaft set screw side by side. The set screw for the shell plate holder has a brass tip and the threads on this set screw are coarser, so they're not interchangeable. So when you put your press back together again, you just want to keep track of which is which. And just push out the cross pin. Next, we're going to use the punch that came with the upgrade kit, thing that looks like a large nail, to punch out the two link arm pins. When you look at the link arm pins on the 550B, one is hollow, the other is, the other is solid. Just to make things a little bit easier on the video, I've already started punching out this one pin, so this one shouldn't be too hard to get out. And we're going to put the punch through the open pin. And we're going to look inside to make sure that the punch is against the back side of the opposite pin. Because what we don't want to be doing is pounding the punch against the frame. And take your hammer. The pin should be coming out down in this area. And there's the solid pin. I'm going to remove the punch. And then we're going to use it to remove this pin. Now just to show you something, if you use this punch in the same direction, when you get it over 
on the other side, it's just going to come through the opening. To get out this pin, you actually insert the punch this way. Insert the punch. I want to look through the opening. Make sure that it's that the head of the punch is against the opposite pin. The pin should be coming out this direction. Just going to double check to make sure that the head's still in the right spot. So there's the hollow pin. Now that the pins are out and the punch come out, you can separate the linkage arm and the frame. Now this is the part of course that we're replacing. So you can put this aside or however you want to deal with it. We will be reusing the arms, the coupler, the main shaft, and everything else. So at this point, I want to go ahead and kind of range it out and get it cleaned up. Okay, here are the parts I'm going to clean. I'm going to be using a degreaser to clean them. I'm going to clean out the shaft openings on the new 550C frame. I'm going to be cleaning out the pin openings. I'm going to be cleaning the new threaded link arm pins. I want to show you a close-up of, of what the new pins look like compared to the old pins. I want to clean the main shaft, the cross pin. I'm going to be cleaning the pin openings in the coupler and in the link arms. These components, I'll be cleaning them, but I won't, I won't be lubricating any of this, except maybe the threads on the shell plate bolt. But everything else, basically I'll take a wire brush to to clean the threads on the bolts and the set screws make sure that there's no crud build up on the indent ball and after it's all thoroughly cleaned and dried i'll lubricate it so at this point i'm going to go offline and clean and thoroughly dry everything then i'll do the bulk of the lubrication and then we'll come back on okay everything has been cleaned and dried most, most of it has been lubricated i applied oil to the shaft I applied grease to the cross bolt. I applied grease to one of the threaded lock arm pins. I applied grease to both openings of the coupler. I've applied grease to lock arm pin openings. There's two on each side, the threaded one and the non-threaded. Threaded one and non-threaded. I suggest you apply grease to these areas and once you've done that, look inside and wipe away any grease that's gotten on the inside of the area where the shaft goes and then you can oil this part of the frame where the shaft goes. I find that when I get grease on the actual shaft, it has a tendency to bind the, the shaft a little bit as it operates. So what I want to do now is just I want to finish greasing these two openings and then I want to finish greasing the last threaded link arm pin. I think one of the terms I've heard Dylan use before was grease liberally.
Okay, now the way I do the uh, link arm pin, so I take my grease gun with the needle adapter, insert it, and apply grease until I see it coming out of the opening. It is right there. It helps get rid of any air on the inside. And then I'm just going to take this excess grease, put it on the pin. One of the reasons why I wear gloves. Also, want it on the threaded area. What I do, I wipe off any grease at the end of the pan because that grease might get pushed out into the shaft opening of the frame. I don't want grease. And one thing I did, I'm going to have to reposition the camera to show it to you, but once I applied the oil to the frame for the shaft area and then, of course, applied it to the shaft, I manually ran the shaft up and down through the frame just to evenly distribute the oil and get rid of any excess oil. All right, once I've got grease on the two pin openings each side, I wiped away any excess grease from the inside, and I've oiled the inside. What I like to do, I've oiled the main shaft. I just like to not drop but just run the shaft through the frame like that and that ensures me that oil gets evenly distributed distributed on both the main shaft and the frame and if I get a lot of excess oil, I keep repeating that until and wiping away the excess oil until I get until I'm satisfied with how much oil I'm seeing. All right, first thing we're going to do is install the link arms in the coupler. So I want to turn the the frame so that the front, if you will, the part facing the reloader is up. Orient the link arms the same way. If you recall, my handle was on the right side. I'm going to come in from the top. And look through the sides, through the openings, see if we can get things lined up. Once it looks like they're lined up, I'll install Okay, to recap, I had the link arms in the frame. I was able to get one threaded pin through the frame, through the arm, and into the frame again when I had removed this pin. But I was not able to get this pin all the way through. It went through this part of the frame, went into the arm partially, but it could not get all the way through. And when I looked at it closely, I could see that this arm was straight into the frame, but this one had like a very slight curve to it. And it resulted, when you look really close, that it wasn't, that the end of the arm was not flush with the frame. And I'll show you a close of that right now. So 
I started looking at why would that happen. And I started doing some measurements. I actually have a two 550s. Uh, this one, it was a factory built 550B, which was my first one. And then I have a second one, which was a factory built 550C. So I started taking measurements between the arm distances and between the frames. Of course, this frame matches the 550 frame because this is the 550C frame. But the distance in the arms is different. So I compared it, and I'll show you kind of a composite photo now. When you look at the crank and the arms at the bottom of the 550B assembly, you were going to see two washers. But when you look at the same setup on the 550C, these washers were not there. And these two washers accounted for the difference in the distances. So I called up Dylan, told him the problem I was having, told him about this issue, and they said under the new 550C design, these washers are not used. Okay, if your vise is like mine, the jaws are going to be heavily serrated here. And when you clamp it down on the metal, it'll probably knock off some of the paint. So I've got some magnetic jaws with a rubber face to it. So I just put those on. The step bolt, even though I wiped the grease off, is still slippery, which is makes sense. It's been sitting in grease for years. So I took a degreaser and cleaned this area, made sure it's thoroughly dry. And then went back to these to these jaws that I bought when I got the vise. Um, has various openings. This is the largest opening. Fit the um, bolt re really well. And I got some granular tape. This is specifically a 3M's Trek tape. It's used for outdoor steps to prevent people from slipping. It, it's a rough textured, but it's not as rough as this. So this is drier. This is, has more grip. So I was able to clamp it down, took the wrench, and just after two or three efforts, the nut started coming loose. And so it came off fairly easily once it was loose. Then the washer comes off. And what I'm going to do now is, when I feel this, some of the grit on this tape it come off on the bolt, so I am going to de use my degreaser and grease this entire bolt and make sure I don't get any degreaser inside the zerk fitting. And remove the two washers or discard them, if you will. Uh, I'm then going to clean the two bolt openings on the two arms, and then I want to be cleaning the bolt opening in the crank. So I'm going to go offline and do that now, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got everything cleaned and re-greased. I actually re-greased the opening, pin openings in the frame. I've actually re-greased the threaded link arm pins. I got the grease off the end because this is the end that goes toward the main shaft. I greased both openings. One was previously greased, but I re-greased it anyway. Same thing with this arm. Now, since it's disassembled, you might wonder, well, does this arm go here, or does it go over here, does it go this way? Here's how you can remember. The name Dylan is only on one side. And it always goes on the outside of the frame, and of course, it does not go upside down. It goes this way. So, you at least got it to here. It's either going to be here, or it's going to be here. Which one is it? 
So if you remember on the right side of the frame is where you can put your prime, spit primer cup. This is the catch for the sprint primer cup. So this arm goes on the right side. So that's how you can keep it straight. In the 550C, the two pins are identical. It doesn't matter whether they use this one here or this one here. I've re-greased the inside of the crank. I've also re-greased these. Now, I'm going to finish greasing this guy, and this is what I did. I took my grease gun with a Zerk fitting. I attached it to the step bolt, and I kept pressing grease until fresh grease came out of the hole. At first, if you're getting some dark colored grease, keep pushing grease through. You want to get fresh grease through. So now that I got some grease there, I want to add some air. Okay, I think we're ready to put it back together again. Uh, as a reminder, the name Dylan goes on the outside. The arm with the primer catch cup goes on the right side. And of course, these openings go into the frame. Therefore, these, excuse me, these will go into the crank. And as a reminder, the step bolt goes so that the Zerk fittings on the left side, if you put it on the right side, they'll interfere with the, with the arm once it's installed. Before we put the nuts on, let's just make sure that it looks right. Name Dylan. Dylan. So we'll go into there. Of course, that's where the main shaft goes. Well, that went in a lot smoother or easier. Remember the last time I was, had to exert some lot of pressure to get in there because they were too far apart. I just look through the openings, see if I can. That's about as far as we got last time. That was going in. going in a lot smoother. Still went 
you should convert from your 550B to 550C. Check your crank and your link arm to see if you have any washers. The washers there, if you do, you're going to have to add the process of removing those washers. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is, I'm just going to snug these up. I'm not going to make them gorilla tight. Start getting loose, I'll just tighten them back up again. If I look down inside, I can see some grease has protruded into the cavity where the main shaft goes. Again, I don't like grease on the shaft, so I'm going to reach down there and, and clean that up. I was filming something, and I believe the camera storage car filled up, so it didn't capture it. But what I did was, even though I've greased everything before I assembled it, I went ahead and took my grease gun, hooked it up, started applying grease because I wanted to make sure that I didn't get grease coming out of the around the nut, uh, and I want to make sure you get all the way through coming out the escape hole down at the opposite end. So after a few pushes, I did start getting grease to come out. And what I wanted to make sure was the first grease that came out was the dark color grease, which means it was dirty grease, probably left over in the in the home. So I kept applying it until fresh grease came out. And this is a close-up. If you look near the bottom of the close-up, you can see where the dirty grease was, and then you can see the fresh grease coming out. Then I want to attach the grease needle and do the same thing to the new threaded pins just to make sure that I don't have grease coming out where it's not supposed to come out. Okay, so I got the needle installed. All right, well, grease came out where I hoped it would. Didn't see any coming out from around the head of the pen. That grease was there from when I was installing it. And the first amount of grease come out is dirty, but then it came out clean. So that part looks good. So I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. But I'll do that off camera, so speed up the video just a hair. What we are ready to do now is to install the main shaft into the frame and then attach the main shaft to the crank using the shaft pin and then securing the shaft pin in, in the crank using the small set screw. And what I do just to help manipulate the shaft, if you will, Since it is heavy and I have oiled it, I'm just going to take one of the platform bolts and install it just to make it easier to lift. Now, does it matter how you insert the shaft into the frame? Of course it does. The shaft pinholes have to line up with the crank, set screw opening for the shell plate bolt, if you remember, when you're looking at your press head-on, it's to the left. Looking at your press head-on, we want this to be toward the left. All right, so now we're going to align the crank with the shaft. Insert the bolt. Okay, the bolt is going to protrude just a little bit on each side. You want to make sure that protrusion is about even. Now we want to install the shaft set screw. Again, make sure you're using the shaft set screw and not, and not the shell plate bolt set screw. Dylan recommends putting a small amount of blue thread lock on this set screw. Not a lot, just a very little bit. And when you install it, unlike the set screw for the shell plate bolt, which should be tied up against the shell plate bolt, this does not get tied up against the main shaft pin. Once you screw it in and make contact, back it out about an eighth of a turn.
right, I'm making contact there. So I'm going to back it out about an eighth of a turn. Okay, at this point, I believe we're ready to install the frame onto the mount. Obviously, this is how it's going to go. I'm not sure you really need to watch me do that because it's fairly straightforward. So I'll go ahead and turn off the video and come back on. Okay, I've got the press mounted to the strong mount. The next thing I'm going to do is attach the handle. Again, I'm going to go off camera because I really don't think you need to watch that. Okay, I've got the handle installed. All right, what we're going to do next is install the platform. And part of installing the platform is aligning it to the tool head. And that's where we'll be using the alignment fixture that came with the upgrade kit. And you will need a spare tool head with empty powder die installed in station one. Now. When you bought the upgrade kit and you got the new frame, it came with a tool head, but it does not come with a powder die. So if you don't have a spare one, see if you can borrow one or buy one. All right, what we want to do first is make sure the top of the shaft is clean. We want to make sure both sides of the fail safe bracket are clean. And we want to make sure the bottom of the platform is clean. Reason is if it's any of these are dirty as we install it, it could end up slightly canting the platform, which is something we don't want to do. Make sure that the holes line up. At this point, we just hand install. The bolts. Now this alignment tool is actually made for both the 550 and the 650. It will fit right inside the powder die. And again, for the 550, the point is to use this tool to line up the platform. Now, what the Dillon instructions say to do is Slowly tighten these and completely tighten them when the tool is fully inserted into the platform. The problem is there is no room for the hex key to get in there. So to get room for the hex key, this is going to have to be kind of like down here somewhere. So we're going to have to run the die down. Let me just tighten this up a little bit. But you can see if I intentionally knock the platform off, how it starts raising the tool, that's not a good thing. Same thing here. It needs to be centered. Hopefully you can see it, but what I do is I, I take the Allen key and I just gently push down on the tool. I don't try to force it down and just gently push down so that I'm using the bevel to help I intentionally move that to get the platform centered. Your goal is as you move this up and down, you're not moving the tool. I'm going to check. I don't see any alignment. I mean, I don't see any movement of the tool. All 
And what I also do, just to double check, is just to make sure I have alignment with the full travel of the platform. So when I screw it in, the tool's moving around, so I expect some contact, but let me... All right, that's good. I see no movement of the tool. All right, so we can see that the powder die is seated into the tool head. And what I want to do is just slowly raise up and down because this is this is my final test. The platform is tightened to the shaft. I'm just making sure that everything looks good. When I look at and listen to it, I don't hear any contact. Okay, so what is next is to install the indent ball spring. Then the ball itself, you might look it over, even clean it. Now I'm not going to show the detailed steps because the rest of it is fairly standard. A lot of it you do when you do a caliber change. But you'll reinstall the shell plate, the index sprocket, shell plate bolt, the set screw, the primer assembly. As I mentioned earlier, the kit comes with a, a new tracking plate. I mean, when I compare it to my existing one, that they look identical, including thickness. If you want to be plate safe, you use the new one. So once the shell plate and primer assembly has been installed, what you want to do with each of your tool heads and set of dies is put it in and then back off the sizing die two to three turns and then using the brass that you normally use reset that die and then when you reload instead of just going to mass production do one make sure it's sized right make sure the primer seating depth is correct correct powder charge correct overall length and correct crimp so check everything and once you do that you should be good to go so hopefully this has given you enough information to understand why I decided to upgrade, but also, more importantly, more information that if you decide to upgrade, what steps you have to go through to fully convert your 550B to a 550C. I hope this information has been useful to you, and thank you for watching.